developing story this morning. We are learning three dangerous prisoners escaped from an Orange County jail. Those inmates were in jail for a very violent and even deadly acts. Deputies say one man was in jail for kidnapping and torture, another for attempted murder, and the third inmate now on the run is facing murder charges. They escaped yesterday morning and the Texas are still trying to figure out how exactly they managed to get away. On January 22nd, 2016, three inmates from the Orange County Men's Central Jail managed to escape the jail's maximum security system. While that's an impressive feat within itself, the three inmates recorded and documented the entire process as well. Yeah, I'm pretty sure a good amount of you guys saw this clip making its rounds on the internet when it first came out. Currently sitting at 22 2 million views, it's safe to say this jailbreak went kind of viral. But just in case this is the first time some of you guys are hearing about this, allow me to give you a quick recap on the situation. You are watching a prison inmate escaping from his cell through the air vent. And he gives a thumbs up when he makes it through. Men sawed a leg off a bunk and then cut a hole in the air vent, allowing them to crawl inside the prison's interior wall. They're out, finally making it to the roof. They then rappelled down five stories using high-grade rope that they had somehow smuggled into the prison. The three inmates escaped from jail by cutting through four layers of steel grating and rebar inside the building, climbing through a plumbing conduit to the roof and lowering themselves four floors to the ground with a rope. They claimed to have had a duffel bag and a backpack full of tools, high-grade industrial rope, and even a change of clothing. They were not reported missing until 9 p.m. the following day, and their escape was confirmed at midnight. The three inmates that managed to escape all have insane backstories as well. This is some shit straight out of an action thriller film. One of the men seen in the jailbreak video is named Hoseen Nayiri. Back in 2012, Hoseen and two of his homies kidnapped and tortured a man that owned the weed dispensary. Hoseen and his homies believed that the owner had about a million dollars buried somewhere in the Mojave Desert. In an attempt to get him to spill the beans on the location of the money, they whooped him, burned him, and also cut off his you know what. Yep, the meat glizzy. Sadly, there was no million dollars, and all they got out of this kidnapping was about 30,000 split between three people. Hoseen fled the country back to Iran, but was caught in the Czech Republic and extradited back to Orange County, where he was sentenced to two life sentences without the possibility of parole. Hussein Nairi, who gained international attention after a 2016 jail escape, recruited two friends who helped him kidnap the man and a woman from a Newport Beach home. The victims were zip-tied, blindfolded, and duct-taped and driven to the desert, where the kidnappers mistakenly believed the male victim had hidden a large sum of money when other methods of torture didn't work in extracting information about buried money that didn't exist. The kidnappers cut the man's penis off. One of the other inmates that escaped with Hoseen was named Jonathan Tew. Jonathan was a member from the Orange County Tiny Rascals gang. He was serving time for a murder that took place at a pool hall in Garden Grove that killed 19-year-old Scotty Bui from POV, also known as Power of Vietnamese. On March 19, 2011, a group of Tiny Rascal gang members were attending a house party. After the party was over, the plan was to go look for enemies. They met up at Stonecrest Park before splitting up into multiple cars. Shortly after, after, they got the call to pull up to a pool hall located on Westminster in Garden Grove. Jonathan and the other TRG members got to the pool hall and that's when they encountered Scotty Bui. Words were exchanged and as Scotty attempted to drive away from the pool hall, several TRG members followed Scotty and dumped five shots into his car at a stoplight. Scotty passed away from a gunshot wound to the head but none of his other passengers lost their life. Jonathan wasn't the actual trigger man but he went down for being directly involved with the murder of Scotty. But Jonathan's case got a little complicated because there was a mistrial during his sentencing. He was being tried as an adult, but changes in state law got his case thrown back to juvenile court because he was a juvenile at the time of the murder. I think he ultimately got charged with assault with a deadly weapon, which is a whole lot better if you ask me. And it makes me wonder why he decided to escape out of jail in the first place. It doesn't seem like he was serving a life sentence like the other guy Hoseen, but I don't know, maybe they were just doing it for the shits and giggles. The third man was named Bak Duong, and he was fighting an attempted murder case. 
Back in November of 2015, Bach was arrested for shooting a man in Santa Ana, but this was definitely not his first run-in with the law. Bach's been getting into bullshit since the 90s. In 1995, he went down for a residential burglary, been busted numerous times for cocaine sales, and has been in and out of prison. After the three men successfully made it out of the jail, they took a taxi cab driver hostage and drove his cab to the Flamingo Inn located in Rosemead where they slept for one night. Upon waking up, they contacted somebody on Craigslist that was selling a utility van and had him meet up with them at the inn. Long story short, they stole his van. Bak Dong was getting cold feet about this entire situation so he decided to turn himself in early. However, Hossein and Jonathan had different plans. They took the stolen van up to San Francisco where they used it as a makeshift van life setup. Jonathan and Hossein made it a whole eight days on the streets before they were arrested at a McDonald's at the intersection of Hyde Street and Stallion Street near the Golden Gate Park. I'm saying this is the craziest thing ever. Johnny here for the first time. Showed up to San Francisco <laughs> and showed up to the best part of San Francisco. Hey, that's baby, baby. And yes, we are not killing anyone. We are not kidnapping anyone. We're just trying to pass time. Trying to weather the storm. That's all. This is our casa right now for the moment. This is our crib. Water. You know, all the basics. What do you want? You want some bananas? No, we don't have. We don't have. We smoke in, in bananas. <laughs> I wish this story had a more epic ending. But no, these guys all ended up in jail within one week of their escape. But say what you will. This jailbreak video is probably one of the most legendary things to exist on the internet. While making this episode, though, I couldn't help but feel bad for these guys. Because at least what we saw on the video. Hoseen and Jonathan seem like chill dudes, but Hoseen, I don't know. There's something seriously wrong with someone that's willing to cut off another man's meat, Glizzy. That is some next level psycho shit. But his interactions with Jonathan on camera were wholesome. I can't even lie. Jonathan was only 14 years old at the time of his murder. So it sounds crazy to hold somebody accountable for the rest of their life for a little mistake. Not a little mistake. A life was lost. A mistake they made back when they were 14 years old. I had no idea what I was doing at 14, but hey, that's just my opinion. Overall, quite the crazy story, and it just gets crazier the more you know about each of the individuals involved in the escape, <laughs> but I hope you guys had a good time watching this video. Um, let me know what you want me to cover next, but until next time, I'll be seeing you guys later. Peace.